one, Tony Winston here, Jazz Piano College, go to work on the song A Sleepin' Bee. And I found two charts, one, uh, I found actually three charts, but uh, the one I'm going to use is out of one of the real books. I think it might be real book. This looks like real book two. And the reason I picked this one is because um, Phil Woods did a great album back in 1977, and this is on it. And he does it in the key of E flat, and all the other ones are in A flat. And I, you know, I'll I'll share that A flat chart with you too. I think it's in the one of the new real books, so it's pretty detailed. And it's got all kinds of chords in it that I don't hear them playing at all. <laughs> I guess there's a version out there that that has a lot more uh, chord changes to it. But this one's really nice. Anyway, I'll put both charts down there if you if you want them. Uh, but let's work on this one in E flat. So the nice thing about staying on E flat for four measures you could really jam out on it you know and I heard a lot of blues lines and things like that in there and the bass player did some really nice stuff which I'll point out here in a minute um, so let's just go through the tune so we're down here pretty low I mean what can you do with an E flat chord that's this low maybe add a ninth or something or, uh, or, or just keep it so simple The, the notes of the melody are turning it into an E flat sixth chord, so we'll think about it that. And then they put in that, you know, what's that from? I don't know. Uh, all the things you are, they always do that as the intro, but. And here it says E6, and it kind of sounds like E6 on the record, but it could be an E flat. Uh, e seventh like that, and then that would be the, uh, the th uh, what's that? The thirteen and the nine. Might just be that six nine chord. I don't know. All right, there's a C with no seventh. But because of that flat nine in there, it sounds like a seventh chord. And maybe if we want to add those chords, we could go. Like that. And here I noticed the bass player did not play the root as the first note. And you know, good experienced bass players don't have to play the root first. They do a lot on important changes, the roots will be there, but you know, on these so very typical the two, five, one, here's a two, five right here. It starts on E flat, goes up to the F, try tone down to B flat. And here, a little bit of a reharmonization, D minor to G is what I heard. And I'm pretty sure whoever wrote this chart, uh, they were going by the Phil Woods version because, I mean, you know, it's got that. So it's got to be that. I'm surprised they didn't give him credit on the page here. So, uh, I don't know about that D flat. Uh, I think that's a total throwaway chord. You could do what you want with it. Uh, you could do something more typical. Maybe you could go to A flat minor or D flat seventh. You know, that melody there, that's what Phil Woods plays, but that's, that's not in the song. But it's very bluesy, isn't it? complicated version it, uh, that the one that's in A flat 
they don't do that great change. All right, that's such a typical thing. You got a two, five, one, but just go up a half step and then do it. And then we're back to the. song having a good time with it I don't think I ever played this song when I was uh, working with trios or anything but it sure is a great song and I wish I would have played it because uh, I would have had a lot of fun with it <laughs> 